My name is Amber, and this is the Be More Best Riders podcast. <laughs> So we here, look, I like to call her the Pedal Queen. Oh, come on now. <laughs> we might have to give her the name the Pedal Queen. So we here with Amber, and we gonna take it back to the basics. Where did your love for these pedal bikes start? Uh, well, like most of us, I started riding when I was a kid. And, um, you know, I remember having like, one of those bikes with the big banana seats on it and I would like stand up on the seat and like the place that I grew up we had um, these ditches that were like three four feet deep but they were all paved so you could like ride your bike down in there and stuff and then I really didn't ride until um, I was in college again I had this like big stressful job and I would ride my bike from my house I lived in Norfolk Virginia at the time um, and it was like a 20 mile round trip that was like every day I would get up, it would take me like an hour to, you know, to get there, and then I have the hour on the way home of, like, my time to clear my head and de-stress from this, like, real frustrating job. And then it was a long time until I got back on the bike, and that didn't really happen again until Baltimore. Um, I've lived all over the place, and um, I moved here in 2019, and um, the first year that I lived here, I was gone a lot because I was traveling for my job, but then in 2020, when COVID happened, a friend of mine was like, we were looking for stuff to do outside, like, let's go on a bike ride. So I like got back on the bike and I really liked being able to like learn the city that way. It was different than when I was just here and like, you know, I'd be here a few days a week and maybe go to a restaurant to meet a friend or whatever, you know, this was like a different way to like be in the city. And so I was just riding with a friend of mine and then I found out about all the, uh, like the group rides that were going on. I think somebody sent me a Facebook group or something. And I started going to like the Friday night ride that Dre throws and um, then I found out about bike party and that was cool. And then there's like these groups that ride every single day. So um, when the weather's warm anyway. So I started riding with them and just like getting more comfortable on the bike. But really I feel like stuff picked up when I started making video clips because Everybody wants videos of themselves riding. Not a lot of people, you know, are doing that. And um, so I got better and better. And then I started meeting the kids. Well, I say the kids and I don't really like mean it in a disrespectful way, but literally I'm like their mother's age, most of them. So I'm 41, <laughs> but I met like the youth, um, the, the wheelie boys, you know, and uh, I was like, this is way more fun to film than the adults land riding, even though like they're my friends, but you know, so I started riding with them and inviting them to more of the group rides and like getting better at the clips. Like they've really taught me so much about riding and the city and how to fix your bike and like being in traffic and all of that. So I just started riding more and more with like the youth that ride here. And I feel like that's, you know, really got me hooked. And so let's, let's take it back, <laughs> let's take it back. Now, before you came to Baltimore, in which you came, pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't know if you've seen all of Baltimore yet, but before you came to Baltimore, what what kind of ideas or perspective did you have on Baltimore? Well, I always had a few friends in Baltimore and like my, um, my partner at the time, like we would come up here for shows. Like I came up in the hardcore punk scene, like in music and booking bands and stuff like that um, in Virginia and we would always come up here for shows so I had like spent some time in the city but not not ever like been here been here you know and so it's like the one side you know I had uh, experience here and friends here and I had been here but mostly I would come up in the afternoon go to a show you know maybe stay the night and then I was out so a lot of what I had seen of Baltimore is you know what's on the news and we all know what that is or like I don't know HBO likes to make crime shows about bottle right like it's that kind of stuff and so um but I've also always lived in places that kind of have that sort of same like Norfolk's kind of like Baltimore's little brother and like Richmond I've lived there too and like they um they have some similarities where there are like some really cool um, underground cultures and scenes and like I've been part of you know independent communities and like underground scenes whether it's been 
punk rock or art or stuff like that that I've been involved with. So Baltimore was always kind of interesting to me because y'all had like the hardcore punk scene, you had an art scene, like the dirt bike culture I was aware of just because I spent time in the city and I would see them go by, you know, and it, so um, I don't know. Like I, I think a lot of people, their initial impression of Baltimore is like, oh, it's a scary place. I can't go there. But like I never really saw it that way because I always thought it was like interesting, cool stuff going on here. People seem, you know, I think sometimes when it's a place like Baltimore where there's like, it's a lot of problems here, the police are shitheads, you know, whatever it is, like there's also, that brings forth a lot of creativity in people because they have to exist outside of these systems that are not really creative for them, you know? And so, I don't know, I always kind of like admire that about a city in Baltimore really, I think now that I've been here, feels like home for some of those reasons, you know, that like, I love the creativity here. So let's talk about that as far as creativity and the community. Like, Baltimore is a very segregated city. Yeah. But when it comes to bike life, give me give me your experience of, as far as the different nationalities, the different demographics that come out to these bike rides. Yeah, I mean, well for me, like, I definitely stick out a lot of times, at least if I'm riding with the youth, you know, I'm like, their mom's age, most of them. <laughs> I'm a white lady, you know. Um, but I think like bike life, like what I've seen is, it doesn't really matter like who you are when you show up. Like it matters like what you do from then on. And so for me, you know, I've been part of a lot of different communities over the years. I, um, I tend to, when I come into a new space and I don't know people, try to contribute something. You know, for me, like a lot of times it's photos or videos because whatever the community is, whether it's around music or art or bike life or whatever, like um, people want to see themselves, you know, they want to be able to see themselves reflected and it's good to find your lane. And so like, I feel like that's what's really possible in bike life. Like um, there are lots of different people that come to stuff. You know, Baltimore is like a heavily black city. A lot of the, the, the rides are black led or it's majority black. Sometimes I'm the only white person that shows up to whatever ride. That's never really been like a big deal for me because I don't know, I guess when I come into a place, I'm not looking to be like, here's my agenda, here's what we're gonna do. You know, I wanna get to know the community and see where I fit in. And so for me, I feel like I've really been welcomed, not in the sort of like smiley happy, we're happy to see you here way, but sort of like, I don't know, like. Um, She's one of us. <laughs> yeah, like people kinda like, now that I've been showing up, you know, people can tell I have good intentions, but I'm not pushy. Like, I've really been able to be part of the crowd and that's awesome. Like, and I've seen that happen with other people too that aren't necessarily like the majority or whatever. And I really appreciate that about bike life because I feel like, you know, when we're on the bikes and we're moving through traffic and all of that, like we really do ride as a unit. You know, you, we look out for each other. If somebody drops off, we wait, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, when we stop the bikes, then everybody's kind of back in their own world or whatever. But like when people are together, like I think that's one of the cool, powerful things about community is like we're better together kind of thing. So and like what you said earlier, when you got on a bike, you know, it was therapeutic. Yeah. So I know you also into yoga. Mm -hmm. So, you know, about the therapy. <laughs> so. Like a lot of people are riding to release yeah, and to right. cope. So you see that a problem is not just a black problem or a white problem. It's, right. it's people problems. Yeah. And how can we release it instead of blowing up on each other? Mm -hmm. Let's hop on a bike. Yeah. Let's go do this, let's go do that. Cause everybody just wants to feel good and look good. That's right. All right, so when it comes to bikes, yeah. What's your favorite bike right now, your go-to pedal bike? So right now my favorite pedal bike is a Haro BMX bike. It's a 29-inch uh, bike and I've got it from, um, I don't know if you know Lee that works on all the pedal bikes. He used to ride their bikes back in the day. and um, So I bought it from him and I ended up painting the bike myself, like did like spray paint and I, um, uh, I initially had, like did the first sticker kit that I ever did. I guess we'll talk about the sticker kits, but like I did a tribute to a band and like put these stickers on the bike that had to do with a band. So I really wanted to like make it mine. 
And I think that for me makes a bike a favorite more than like, does it ride perfect or whatever? Cause I'm always like switching and tinkering with stuff. And you know, right now I'm trying to find a new gear bike and stuff like that. But I think like making it personal and making it something that nobody else has, like that's, that's the cool part about it. And like, I love that about bike life. I feel like a lot of people, you know, really get to be like an individual and kind of show, you know, I am different. I'm like some half redneck, half punk lady that showed up, you know, it's like, let me like show you my ways and, you know, show you a little bit about me. And so like, that's, that's the bike right now. But yeah, I'm getting you know, off on a know, tangent now. <laughs> that, that was kind of, kind of dangerous to really have a st standout bike when you was younger. Because once you get to riding in these other hoods, like, yeah. you got people that want to take your frame, people that want to take your tires, people might like your handlebars, yep. or even your tricks on the I mean, like, mm -hmm. that was That's just how serious bike life is in Baltimore. Yep. Like, you can get your bike to even <laughs> it's, it's true, too, it is too true. Nice, you it's know? true, yeah. So you said you don't really do tricks. Do you have a go-to trick? I do, tr I do a few tricks. I don't really wheelie. I'm learning to wheelie. I am. Um, I, uh, I can get about three pedals in and then I hit the brake and the wheel drops. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. Um, but yeah, my favorite trick is, uh, like I have the pegs on the back of the bike. So I like stand on the bike and just cruise with no hands. That's probably like my favorite thing. Okay, but you got a no hand cruise. Yeah, you okay. know, I don't know. <laughs> top five pedal riders right now. All Who's right. Top five? In Baltimore City, that's easy for me. Miz, Bike Life TR, uh, One Way Des, um, Ron, and Eddie. Yeah. Okay, she shouted y'all out, man. <laughs> hey, she shouted y'all out. So now we gotta get y'all on the podcast too. Yeah, I, I'll give you the Instagrams. You can yeah, put, you yeah, can put them in yeah, the yeah, links yeah, or yeah, whatever. Y'all yeah. pop out, show support. Yeah. So um, back to the merch. What, what, what made you get so creative with the merch and all those things? Well, you know, I've made merch for a long time. Like I, like I said, I did a lot of community projects over the years. Um, I've made merch for bands ever since I was like a teenager. And um, I think merch is just like a fun way to celebrate what's going on in your community, especially if, you know, you're doing it yourself. Like it's different if you sponsored by a corporation and they're doing stuff for you or okay, you're a band on a record label and they're gonna handle that. But really when it's you doing it for yourself, then you gotta do it yourself, you know? And so for me, um, originally actually the merch was not the idea. I was gonna do um, a zine, it's like something we do in the punk scene. And they've been around for a long time. It's like short for magazine, basically just like a little independent publication about a subculture. And like when I met the kids and like started riding with them, I actually did some interviews with people and I was gonna make this little magazine, but then I started doing the videos. And so like the more and more I got with them, I was sort of like, okay, well maybe I'll do this other thing. So the merch, you know, once I had started doing sticker kits, um, which is kind of separate from like the shirts and stuff I've been making, um, I really wanted to just make something that kind of commemorated like the spirit of what's going on here in Baltimore with the pedal bikes. And I feel like Baltimore gets a lot of love for the dirt bikes, which of course it should, because it's like such a cool culture here and it's so much bigger than the pedal bike scene here. But like, we got some nice riders in Baltimore, like for real. And I think some trendsetters of like, people look at, you know, the, the bike riders here as like trendsetters in, in the country or the world really. And so I just wanted to make some stuff to really like say like, yeah, they're here. Like, and you know, so that is like one of the, the shirts that I made said here to stay and it, the, we got one here that I brought for you but uh, with the with the kids like aren't on there because I feel like you know the bike scene in Baltimore is big like if you go to like a bike party it can be like a thousand people there but you know the youth like they have their own thing and they really like lead on that and so I just wanted to make something that you know kind of commemorated that and also that like they was something that you can hold on to I think in nowadays like social media is so big and social media is awesome because we get to discover people and like learn things and everything I'm a fan of the internet but also you know, there's something about having that like tangible thing that you could hold in your hands and say like, oh yeah, this was that time, you know? And so that's kind of like why I do that stuff. Um, 
And the sticker kits, you know, I started making sticker kits. I don't know if you have like another question about that or I could just talk about it, but. Well, well, let me, let me, let me ask this question. Yeah. Um, what ideas or maybe advice you could give riders if they want to start making their own merch and monetize and riding? What, what advice would you give them? You know, um, I think it's smart to make merch. You get your name out there. People people represent you because they have your, you know, it's different if someone wearing a shirt with your stuff on it than just sharing a social media post, right? Like this is a different level of sort of, I don't know, buy-in and support. So I think merch is great. There's a lot of sites that help you do that. Um, you know, you could do it yourself with uh, stencil paper and uh, some paint. Like you can get real hands-on or you can go and pay a little bit to somewhere like Cafe Press or one of those types of websites where you can upload a design and get it printed and do a small run. Um, there's ways to do it without having to put forth a lot of money right up front. Um, my advice would be start small make 10 or 15 of whatever you're thinking, sell it to your friends, try to get, you know, I think one of the biggest things with having online is like, if you have a network, flex that network. Like if you know riders in other cities that have a following, you know, make the shirt, send it to them, ask if they can wear it. You know, you might have to work out some trade, you know, make sure that if you're asking somebody for something, you're also contributing in return. Like, it's not just about like, wear my stuff, promote me, but like, okay oh you you have merch too like let's trade and then we can each service do a service right like so thinking about i think collaborations is really smart especially if you're new um if you're trying to build an audience um i have this you know whole career in marketing we could get real technical about all of it but i think the 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 main thing is like um making sure that you like leverage what you have you know not all of it some of us have money some of us have followers some of us have the ability to do public speaking some like what are those like natural things that you have what are the assets that you already have and then like how can you kind of leverage that to make it better you know i, I think we we might have to do a part two ah! yeah. <laughs> so listen man if y'all need some cons consultation some advice make sure y'all jump in amber's inbox dm us yeah, man, I'm gonna have her at for her, uh, her social medias and all that. So how tapped in are you uh, with the, the dirt bike riders, bike riders? So um, I know a few of the dirt bike riders here. A lot can of you, them. Can you, do you have a top five? Oh man, all right. So I could probably do a top five. Uh, most of the people that I know from dirt bikes, so like I'm just a fan of dirt bikes. I never rode a dirt bike. I never even got on the back of a dirt we bike. Get, we might have to get Adam on a dirt bike <laughs> hey, in summer. I would love to get a four wheeler and, and follow y'all around with the videos. Yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> but uh, um, I would say like I'm, you know, most of the dirt bike riders I know are people that rode pedal bikes like Maine, Kai, Rez, all of them. Um, I think probably like if my favorite rider, I don't know if I can like break it down like that, but I'll say like I really like Milk because I feel like he's one of those people I can see him in a video and I don't even know that it's him, but I know it's him. Or I see him on the street and be like, there he goes. So like that to me is cool. Like you got a style that's recognizable even if I can't see that it's you. So that sticks out, but Maybe that's not five, that's like four, but. <laughs> that, that, that was five, you said Maine. Kai. Kai. Reds. Reds milk. Milk. One more. Mm. Big Mark on the four wheel. Okay, one of, <laughs> one of the legends. Okay, yeah. you going back. I know a few people, <laughs> not <Okay>. everybody. <laughs> Right, I'm learning, I'm learning. Go ahead and drop your social medias for everybody. Yeah, so on Instagram, it's Amber Carnes Official, K-A-R-N-E-S. And I also have one for the sticker kits and stuff. It's um, it's called Amber House, but it's Shop Amber House. Um, so that's my Instagrams. Um, my YouTube, you can just look. Uh, any social media, my name, Amber Carnes, uh, will find you. And you know, I'm putting it up on the screen yeah. for you and all that. I appreciate <laughs> you coming out to be more Best Riders Podcast. Thanks for having me.